Hi, it's Professor Black's History and thanks again for joining us. As always, our purpose for being here is to give you some names of some people you might not have heard of, hopefully people whose story will inspire you. Today we're going to be talking about a person who just makes you think that, remember, people who become famous suddenly, or even most of the time becoming famous, are not usually famous to start off with. They end up gradually becoming famous, and most famous people, a lot of them anyway, never set out to become famous. They just set out to have a great life. Like the person we're going to talk about today, Eugene James Bullard, or Eugene Jock Bullard. He was the first African-American fighter pilot. Now, of course, most people have heard of the uh, famed Tuskegee Airmen, and of course, they were the first African-American fighter pilots for the United States of America. But Eugene Bullard was actually the first African-American fighter pilot. Flying, he was called the Black Swallow of Death. Now, he was born uh, again in Columbus, Georgia uh, in the late 1800s, so you know that he experienced lots and lots of racism. He was the son of former slaves. Um, he went to school for a while, uh, and then he worked as a jockey for a while because he left home very early, around 9 or 10 years old, I think he left home. Um, but he wanted to leave the U.S. because of all the racism he experienced. And the straw that broke the camel's back was when his father was nearly lynched by a mob. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So he went uh, to Europe. He ran away to Europe at 17, and he didn't actually pay for passage. He was a stowaway uh, on a ship to Europe. The ship landed in Scotland, so he stayed there for a little while. But then he made his way to France. He worked as a prize fighter. He was also a vaudeville uh, performer. Somewhere along the way, I'm not sure where, he must have learned how to play the drums because he was a drummer. And he enlisted in 1914 in the uh, French Foreign Legion, uh, when World War I started. Of course, at that time, the French Foreign Legion was the most uh, prestigious military force in the world. Uh, so he was a part of that. He became Corporal Eugene Bullitt. And of course, Eugene Bullitt being a corporal meant he had leadership qualities. He was also given uh, the French medal. I know I'm going to destroy this, but I'll give it to you anyway. Uh, the French uh, Pro de Guerre. And uh, <laughs> try to say that three times real fast. Anyway, uh, that uh, medal he was given for bravery and distinguished service during battle. Uh, he left the, the French Foreign Legion after a while because he had gotten wounded, was wounded pretty badly. Uh, he finally left the French infantry and joined the French Air Force in 1916. And he was assigned to the Black Swallow Squadron, and he was called the Black Swallow of Death. He flew at least uh, 20 missions and at least one German plane uh, he is credited with downing. So he was a great guy, he was a great pilot, and after the war he became a nightclub owner and he uh, had some of the hottest acts uh, in the world at the time. Uh, people like uh, uh, Josephine Baker and Louis Armstrong, people like this uh, played at his club. And he, you know, he was friends with these people. Of course, again, he played the drums uh, during some of those uh, times they got together for jam sessions. During World War II, he was a spy for the French. Uh, he spied on German um, intelligence people who came into his nightclub. So he was a spy during World War II. When the Germans came and occupied France, uh, he escaped with his two daughters to the United States. And he died kind of in obscurity uh, here in the United States. But he was honored once again after, he, while he was here, uh, he left here and went to France, back to France, for, uh, to be honored as part of the uh, veterans uh, being honored in France at the time. Uh, he was world famous at the time he lived, uh, and of course, again, when he came back to America, being a black man, he wasn't given a lot of credit for his achievements, and he worked as an elevator operator and some other menial jobs before he passed away. But he was posthumously awarded a second lieutenant's uh, rank in the United States Air Force in 1994. So he was someone that our country finally did recognize as a great uh, individual. But check it out, Eugene Bullard. He's the black swallow of death. I invite you to pick up a book and read, some of the, read about some of these great people. Hopefully their stories will inspire you. Hopefully you'll come back next time so we can tell you about someone else who you probably never heard of. But then again, that's why we have Professor Black's history.